Hey guys, it's Jaden Clark here from Jazz Lesson Videos and today we'll be diving into the world of approach notes and enclosures. Approach notes and enclosures are key devices for what we like to call melodic chromaticism in jazz. These devices allow for the use of chromaticism in our voice leading in order to facilitate the construction of melodic phrases. Melodic chromaticism really is the foundation of bebop and is a great framework to help us analyze greats like Bird and Diz. Of course, it is important to note that the naming of these devices isn't super important, but adding a label will help us analyze them. So what exactly can we do to apply this concept? I'm going to show you three different phrases that feature both chromatic approach notes and enclosures that do just that. These phrases can be found in the approach note and enclosure phrase workouts PDF package in which you can find phrases of different lengths over major seven, minor seven, and dominant seven chords. To download this resource along with phrase recordings, feel free to click the link below. Now, before we jump into these phrases, it's important to know what chromatic approach notes and enclosures are and how they are used. Now, chromatic approach notes do exactly what the name of them suggests. They chromatically approach a target note. Generally, this target note is going to be a chord tone that lies on a downbeat. That is beats one or beats three. Now, often chromatic approach notes are just one chromatic note in between two diatonic notes, but they can also be a series of chromatic notes that lead either up or down by half step to a target note. Here is an exercise that demonstrates how you can implement chromatic approach notes between scale degrees. <laughs> So let's take a look at the ascending version of this exercise. You can see that we start on a scale degree, we move down a step, and then we move back up to the scale degree, and then we have that chromatic approach note in between that leads up to the next scale degree. That next scale degree is our target note. Of course, as we can see, if you move your eyes across the page there, you can see that we have scale degrees on beats one and three, as we move through this exercise. You can also see that when we have only a half step between scale degrees, so you can see that there in measure two between the E and the F, we're having to change up the pattern just slightly and notice this happens again there between the seventh and the root note. Now our descending version is basically the ascending version just flipped upside down. We start on the scale degree, we move up a step at, before falling back down to the scale degree, and then we have that chromatic approach note in between, this time leading down. Of course, when you have a half step between the two scale degrees, you see that we have to change the pattern in those similar spots once again. Okay, so onto chromatic enclosures now, once again, they are exactly how the name sounds, right? We are enclosing a target note. In other words, we are wrapping a target note with different chromatic notes. Once again, this means that we will usually have a chromatic note above and a chromatic note below. This is sometimes paired with two chromatic notes above, one chromatic note below, or vice versa. One chromatic note above and two chromatic notes below that is a chromatic enclosure, both two notes and three notes. So let's check this out in an exercise now. Once again, like our chromatic approach note exercise, we're going to be targeting each note of the C major scale. <laughs> So this exercise, you can see that we have scale degrees on beats one and three. We've got them targeting on the downbeats and in between you have three note chromatic enclosures, right? You can see most of the time we have two notes above, one note below and then target note. And of course, just like our chromatic approach note exercise, we see that when we have only a half step between scale degrees, we're having to change up the pattern a little bit. So this happens twice here once again that's when we have one note above and then 
two notes below. This is a really, really great way you can apply chromatic enclosures through a scale with an exercise like this. With that out of the way, let's jump into some phrases that directly apply these concepts. First, let's check out a short phrase. So looking at this phrase straight away, we can see that we have chord tones landing on the downbeat. So of course we are starting on the fifth, we have the third on beat three, and then of course we resolve nicely to the root note of the next measure. Okay, so how are we joining these chord tones together? Well, we are using chromatic approach notes and enclosures, and more specifically with this particular phrase, we actually have two enclosures, right? So you can see we have the two chromatic notes above, one chromatic note below, okay? That happens twice here. Of course, when we are practicing phrases like this, and you will have heard, I, I took it through a few keys. Now, of course, with the shorter phrases, this is much easier to do, but of course, once the phrases get a little harder, well, of course, that transposition is going to get a little harder. That's why it's really, really important that we are able to break down phrases like this into its devices, right? The devices being the approach notes and enclosures. You'll find that it'll make transposition much, much easier. Next up, let's check out a phrase that's a little longer now. So this one's going to be taking up two whole measures rather than just one and resolving on the first beat of bar two. Also note that we are playing a phrase over a dominant seven chord now as opposed to the major seven chord that we looked at in the previous phrase. So with this particular phrase, of course, once again, you can see that we are mostly landing on chord turns on downbeats with the exception of beat one of beat two. And you can actually see that we start an enclosure on beat one of bar two. Now I say start an enclosure. Of course, we have our usual three note enclosure that resolves to the fifth on beat three, but notice how you have that F sharp there. Now I'm considering that to be a little bit of an extension, right? It's almost like an approach note leading into the enclosure. It's not too important, but you will understand once you start to get a little deeper into melodic chromaticism that this happens quite a bit. This is actually common in the bebop language. Of course, the other enclosure that we can recognize there is of course targeting beat three of beat one. We can see that that's targeting the flat seven. Now notice, of course, I also played this through a couple of different keys. Once again, what I find really helps with these phrases is simply just analyzing those approach notes and enclosures because again, hopefully we are starting to see the patterns here. Right? We are generally resolving to downbeats. In fact, in the last couple of phrases that we've looked at, we are only resolving to downbeats. Again, downbeats being beats one and three. And generally, we are putting chord tones on those beats as well. Of course, with the exception of that beat, right? Beat one of measure two that I mentioned there. You can find phrases like these and more through the keys in the approach notes and enclosure phrase workouts PDF package. With this resource, you'll be able to check out many different applications of melodic chromaticism over the major seven, the minor seven, the dominant seven chords, making it the perfect resource to build fluency. Now, what you'll also be able to find are longer phrases, and we'll check one of those out right now. This phrase will span four measures, so keep an ear out for those approach notes and enclosures. <laughs> Getting into this phrase now, much more complex, and we also have some rhythmic embellishment in here as well. So the first measure is tricky because what actually happens is we have a chromatic enclosure that leads to the raised seventh. Of course, this makes total sense if you're playing over a C minor major seven chord. And in fact, a lot of one minor chords are considered to be C minor major seven chord. So that's fair game. Okay, that's fair game. From that raised seven, we actually moved up a diminished triad before resolving to the fifth on beat one of the next bar. Of course, in order to resolve 
we use some chromatic approach notes as well as that rhythmic embellishment. So we're kind of squishing those approach notes together in order to cleanly land on beat one of the next measure. Of course, in the next measure, the first two beats, we simply move down the C minor seven arpeggio before moving into an enclosure that targets the root on beat one of bar three. Of course, in bar three, once again, we have some chromatic approach notes that target the third on beat three. As you can see, all downbeats up until this point. And to wrap up this phrase, we have a couple of chromatic approach notes that resolve down to the root note. And that is beat one of measure four. Of course, that root note then moves up to the fifth. So both resolve notes and that is our phrase. Now, what you can do in order to better break down this phrase, especially when you're going to go ahead and transpose it, is actually just take it one measure at a time. And if you wanted to, you could actually take it one section at a time. That is perhaps two beats where you feature one set of chromatic approach notes or one set of chromatic notes that form an enclosure. What you'll notice by doing this is that your muscle memory will recognize the chromaticism. Right, because there are only so many ways you can chromatically approach and chromatically enclose a single note. So that's not a bad strategy for longer phrases like this one. Thinking about melodic chromaticism by using approach notes and enclosures can help us analyze the bebop language as well as help facilitate smooth voice leading in our lines. By applying these concepts to phrases through the keys, we can get a better sense of how these lines are put together and build our muscle memory in a way in which we can put these kinds of phrases together when we are improvising. To go even deeper into these devices, as well as the phrases we checked out and more, click on the link below to download the Approach Note and Enclosure Phrase Workouts PDF package. As always, please let us know if there are any particular topics that you would like us to cover in our next video, and we'll be sure to put them at the top of our list. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.